More pleasant escape Pomor and Scave. My Lions picked up a big victory and well as there's a new team that flew to the summit of the table. But we'll start one place and one place only and that's with the junglers playing against Lenny Heights Dumbo Olin. Yeah man, this is Match Week 14 review show. Yeah people, welcome back to Jampiel Fan. We're going straight into Match Week 14 which was scattered about from Monday to Wednesday thanks to an election that never happened. But the show must go on. I'm going to start with the Monday night of fixture between Dumbo Holin and Arnett at the Stadium East. This game now saw Arnett who was coming off a pretty poor display against Cavalier were looking to come back into things as they are drifted away from the top spots while Dumbo Holin also not having the best run of things as late despite their good performances and will also want to solidify that top 6. So how did it went out? Well it went 1-0 to the junglers thanks to an opportunistic strike by Fabian Reed in the 65th minute. But this game was a game more of missed chances for Dumb Holin. Once again, they played pretty well, pretty good football has kept on the ground, good possession, and they eked out probably the most chances of eked out in a match all season. But just could not find a way past a stellar Hutchinson in the Arnett goal. That guy Hutchinson is the second keeper, found himself having a blinder. I was a man in form, standing on top of his head to keep up some, some shots with some brilliant saves that we'll see, some of the best of the season. But Dumbolin was would feel a bit uh, aggrieved and I, I thought that Nicholas Nelson had an excellent game. He was really the main man for Dumbolin. He was stringing a lot of pass, he was looking goal dangerous but he was also a cut figure of frustration up front as some of the passes were coming his way, some of his shots were going in and some of those saves were really leaving him reeling. Also, you know, due to unforeseen injury, um, Lenny I turned a youngster from St. George's who were a prolific schoolboy football and got his chance in the spotlight to give them the lead but somehow find his head out over the bar. So a good display by Dumbolin but they were much helped by the very poor football from Arnett, especially in the first half. It, again, I thought last week against Cavalier was in the first half was one of the worst of the season and they kind of replicate that exact same performance in this first half. They could not hold the ball for saving life. They were rushing players and everything was coming to Fema Reed. He was not holding the ball. I actually thought despite his goal, he had a poor game. So Ali could not find any creativity going forward, look disarray, and it was a, every attack was just breaking down. They were they were a turnover machine and gave a lot of the chances right back to dumb holding. Who well should have done better to really find the back of the net. Thankfully, in the second half, I give credit again to Xavier Gilbert, and they came out much more better, much more positive, and with much more of a game plan. But all the attack didn't really come to the fore until that guy Kelson came into the game. He gave them much needed spark and creativity up front, and his play in the middle of the field, along with Warner Brown, gave them the, the goal that they needed. I realize the issue here in Arnett is that they are sticking to their 4-3-3 but they are kind of dry and tacky wingers at the moment and I really don't like Warner Brown playing out wide as you can see on the goal he's much better through the middle. But nonetheless they eked it out, they fought and they got the goal and they held on and thanks again to their excellent goalkeeper to get the massive 3 points. Dumbo holding with feeling away again. Another good performance, it, it is a replicant of their game against Cavalier where they control a lot of the possession and good football but just could not find a way past the opposition. So yeah, another impressive game by Dumbo Holin read no result but they just have to keep them head and I like what Lenny has in the interview, he writes it off as just, just football and he was willing to go again with his team, he was happy with his performance. As for Arnett, hopefully they spark them into life. They need some wingers, I feel, in this general market. As they're, if Gilbert is going to stick with the 4-3-3, I cannot have, I would not want Warner Brown out there out wide. Why O'Shea Smith not so bad as a winger, but they need another explosive speedster on the wings in Coburn and Arborn as left. But nonetheless, the game ended once again. Dumbo hole in zero, Arnett won. So let's go on the other game of Monday. If that was very playing to Mon Lions United. This game, of course, remember the, the reverse picture of what happened in the first game of the season where it was 0-0 and for large stretches of the first half, it appeared it was going back here again. Mon Lions was playing some good football, which they have done as of late, especially after the coaching changes. 
but it is missed that quality in the final third in the first half with some pop shots that went over the bar and wire of the mark why veer veer who had a fairly young lineup with some schoolboys in the t in the team this time were not bad they were being competitive but they weren't getting much on the other end as well but everything changed when that guy daniel hardy who's been the main guy since Jeremy Nelson has been out of the team lately. Found a good goal when he took the ball down and struck it from the right side to give 1 0 early in the second half. Malines continued um, on the attack and find a Livingston who found himself with a left footed shot, giving the second goal. A goal he very much needed as he was his first of the season and hopefully this spur on a goal rush for him. From there, Malines controlled the game, Bear tried to get back in it, but it was not enough to overturn the 2-0 victory for Mullins United, a big win for them to keep them further and further away from relegation battle. So how was the stats like? Alright, so we are at 8 total shots compared to Mullins 12, but we are only at 1 shot on target compared to Mullins 6. So 3 corners to 9 by Mullins and 3 yellow cards for Veer compared to 1 by Mullins. So yeah, the stats basically confirm the tale that this was an all Malines um, performance and while Veer was competitive, this is simply not enough to overcome a good performance by Malines. So again it finished Veer 0, Malines United 2. We're going to go on now to Fernita Park, the big clash of the road. This was first in Mount Pleasant versus second in Portmore. Portmore again has a staunch defense as of late while Mount Pleasant having a bit of issue getting goals. How will this turn out? Well, first of all, before the game even start, they sneaked in a last minute announcement of a major sign in for more pleasant as they threw their muscle and money around and picked up their prolific Harborview striker Shaquille Bradford. He just arrived and said he only made the bench, but that was a big coup by Tapper and his team. But Paul was a team that's been playing well all season, especially at Fernita Park and they would not fear anybody opposed despite Alex Marshall missing this game. So how did it go? Well, it finished one all with Pomer scoring in the 40th minute of a corner from Stephen Young while Mount Pleasant were a bit lucky to find himself equalizing in the second half, deep into the second half in the 95th minute thanks to Daniel Green penalty. So it was a good game of football, very highly competitive game where probably what was missing is a bit more quality in the final third on both sides but was highly competitive so much so that well more pleasant were picked up a red card in the 72nd minute to davis but nonetheless they're hanging around and they do what champions do find a way to grind out a result but Puma was rather impressive they did well for most of the game and we feel aggrieved that they skipped up that handball in the box in the last minute so we say you don't lose concentration in that type of end of the game but you know these things happen, especially if fatigue play a role. So how does the stats go like? So it's poor more than six total shots compared to Mount Pleasant eight. But this will show their how even they were. Both sides had three shots on target. So yeah, you know, this was the first picture. If you remember the first match at the start of the season, I thought they were fairly even then. But Mount Pleasant shaded it and got away with a 1-0 win. While in this game. I feel they were fairly even but Portmore shaded but they could not do enough to come away with the victory. So good important point for more Pleasant while Portmore keep themselves in the top 3. So once again it finished Portmore United 1, Mount Pleasant 1. Alright we're going to go on to a team that's having probably the best week of the season. There are, everything is going right for Montego Bay United this week after an announcement of a new academy as well as the announcement of seven new signings they even went one step further and got the bigger news that they were returning to Catherine Hall starting in late January so it's some, a big week for Montego Bay United while Lyme Hall was, was having a very low season so far winless up to this point and staring relegation straight in the face Maybe they feel that this is the time to turn the corner around but they went to Westport Park to take on Montego Bay United and in this one it was all Mobe who came away with a 3-0 victory a fairly easy one for them as well 
which is coming the norm for any team that's facing Lime Oilers of late. The goals came early in the first half by Owen Garden in the 70 minutes. Owen Garden was one of those signings that's returning back to his home club and you know what a way to make your second debut with a goal in the same mean to give them the lead from there it got much easier and Mo Mo Mobe dominated and got a second in the 30 second minute from Ode and Nish from there it got even easier Blymal really didn't put much of a fight in the second half and Untika Bay rolling it off with a good comfortable win from that guy again Bri Brian Brown in the 80 second minute to give him a comfortable easy 3-0 victory for Montego Bay. So this basically just capped off a pretty excellent week from the Montego Bay ownership and club overall and you know give them a small hope of still making sure they get into that top six. With seven new signings they make a take a run at the table and get themselves there in the top six. While Lionel I it, it is looking like there's nothing can be done at this point. It, it's very early to write them off with a whole second round to go but it really looking like they won't be playing JPL next year. They really need some players in this general window, especially a striker or two, but it's not looking likely that's because we have not seen anything going on for them right now. But again, it finished. Montego Bay 93, Lima 0. We're going to the next game and we're going all the way to St. Best, Treasure Beach. The other new boys played host to Humble Lion. Humble Lion once again on a new staff of the Reynolds team were hoping to take advantage of Treasure Beach poor form to get some wins under the belt to kickstart this rebuilding process while Treasure Beach who felt very unlucky in their last game against Harborview will hope to continue a good performance once again but this time with the result to match. So how did it end up? Well unfortunately for the Treasure Beach they lost once again to Humble Lion and this time it felt a bit of unlucky again as the goal came late in the 82nd minute by Thomas. So Treasure Beach once more played some decent ball again but the goals have severely dried up and they have scoreless in no 7 games. That's a big drop off to how they were playing in the start of the season where they were a bit more cavalier in their, in their approach and got some goals. But Humble Line, yeah they're, they're, they're steady and probably coming more farming under what Reynolds would want from them and you know I think they're doing well de defensively lately so this is another good clean sheet to get and another important win to in the rebuilding process how does the stats look like okay so Trader Beach who again had a better run of the, play the game I feel had 11 total shots compared to Homo Line 4 so the Beach also had 4 shots on target compared to Homo Line 2 Treasure Beach has 7 corners compared to 4 from Homo Lion and there's only 1 yellow card in the game to Homo Lion. So yeah, back to back games at home for Treasure Beach, most win games to help them win the relegation battle, much good performances but if you don't find the goals, it's very likely going to win any matches of course, you need goals. While Homo Lion, they ride out their luck, they had solid defense and did enough to pull off a much needed 3 points. So once again, it finished straight up with 0, Humber Line 1. We move on to a big rivalry clash in Jewsland as Waterhouse was once again playing at the Waterhouse Mini Stadium and play host to Tivoli. Tivoli, who got the shock of the round last time when they lost to Montague Bay United, will look to bounce back and keep pace with the top three teams. While Waterhouse, as I always said, are the most inconsistent team in this league. And we hope that you know another good performance that like they did last week will, will happen once again here at home to Tivoli. Well, it didn't quite play out that way. Tivoli won out 1 0 thanks to an early goal from Penny Cook in the 12 minutes, and it was enough to secure the victory. This is what the stats were like in this game to see what exactly happened. Waterhouse had 13 shots overall compared to 4 in Tivoli. Waterhouse had 5 shots on target compared to 2 from Tivoli and 4 corners apiece. So it seems that Tivoli managed to get the early goal, a sucker punch and Waterhouse will hit the gas and try their best to get back into the game. Doing well to pepper the Tivoli goal but could not find a way through. So tough luck for Waterhouse but an excellent 3 points again from Tivoli who's not been playing well in the last couple of games but despite their loss last week they've been picking up some points. 
But I feel that Jerome Wade probably a bit worried about the performances lately. They are, they are not as dominant as they were in the start of the season, but the win is the win nonetheless. This is also a, a double, a league double for Tivoli over Waterhouse after beating them 3 0 on opening day. So again, it remains Waterhouse 0, Tivoli 1. We move on to the final game of the match week 14, and that's a return match between Cavalier and Harbour View. Cavalier have a chance of doing the double, while Harborview will feel much better after getting two back-to-back -back victories and two back-to-back -back clean sheets to keep them away from relegation. But they lose their star man in Bradford to Mount Pleasant. There's an interesting sale there. So let us see how they stocked up against a very strong unit in Cavalier who are a winning machine as of late. How did the game went? Well, the game ended 1-0 to Cavalier. Thanks to a goal from McClary in the center for mint. Um, up to that point, Cavalier probably felt that without Bradford, they will have an easy go at it. But credit to Harborview, who are buzzing with confidence, put up a very good fight. While you, you could say in the run of play, Cavalier slightly shaded. But if it wasn't thanks to a, a fine double save and performance from Jalil White, Harborview will probably be the one that will be tasting victory in this one. It was a good game by the Stars of the East, despite the main man. But Cavalier, once again, that mean defense, right? That's their fourth clean sheet in five, stood up for them once more and it was propel them to help to get them to the one goal victory. This defense is what will carry them, I feel, all the way to the finals. And if they can keep it up and find more attack going forward, which I do feel they have the players for it, it's looking like Cavalier might be the class and the predetermined champions of this season. Too early to call, of course. I'm only saying this in jest. But they're definitely a team you gotta keep an eye on. They're very dangerous. It's a good performance again. That's another win five in a row. While half of you who probably still feel that right, despite Bradford going, they are safe from legation as the teams below them are playing so poorly right now that they don't have to worry about that. The two victories help, of course, and this is another decent performance. So they feel like they have turned the corner. Scavalier was just too strong for them this time, but they should just keep going and they should probably rise up the table. They need to make some purchases in this window though if they want any chance of catching the top six. But nonetheless, it finished once again. Cavalier 1, Happy View 0. So yeah people, that was it. A pretty good uh, round of fixtures. So where does that lead us in terms of the table? Would this, mean, would this mention Cavalier pulling off the victory and that she was good enough to carry him all the way to the summit at 30 points after 14 games played. They've leapfrogged both more Pleasant and Portmore who cancel out each other in second and third. Tivoli hanging around, they're still in fourth, while Arnie picked up an important win to give them daylight between fifth and their opponents in sixth, Dumbo Holin. Dumbo Holin remains in the final playoff spot and 21 points, while the bottom half sees the inconsistent Warhouse keeping steady in seventh and 19 points. Montego Bay though is surging up the table and find himself in 8th with 18 points while Veer had dropped all the way to 9th and also on 18 points. Homeline is hanging about in 10th in and 17 points while Harbour View, as I said, is feeling fairly safe at the moment all the way up in 11th with 15 points. 4 ahead of Homeline's who also probably see a little bit of safety daylight at the end of the tunnel where they got a good important victory to have them at 11 points. Treasure Beach though, reeling, that 7 points for 7 games now, they are stuck in 13th spot and poor poor Lime Hall who are winless in 14 matches at the summit of the table with 4 points. So yeah people, good week of football, um, it's disappointing we had to, the games were moved from Sunday to midweek but the extra days apart, it still produced some good matches. I also have to mention that I am very pleased, especially as a former goalkeeper myself, that the keeping in this league has improved tremendously. Not just because of the two performances this round, but if you've been watching from match week one, you could see that the standard of keeping have increased significantly amongst all teams. I have to give much credit to all involved in there, all the club's goalkeeping coach and everything for that one. It makes for a better product on the field, a better product for watch on TV. So overall though, we we'll look forward to what's going on this weekend. That's it here from us here at Jumpiel Fun. So yeah, man, so I appreciate the support. To continue liking and subscribing and sharing for all things Jamaican Premier League right here at Jumpiel Fun. Big up again, YouTube.